Hi, I'm Sarah from Heirloom Creations, and we just got finished with the recent Sotopia Sewing Club where we featured decorative stitches. And I have a ton of samples that I want to show you. But before I get into some of the ins and outs of really using the decorative stitches, now not embroidery, not the embroidery on your machines, but the fun ones that came with your machine that we sometimes forget to use, I want to show you just a quick little trunk show of some quilts that came from Creative Grid. These are going to be some upcoming Ruler of the Month. We are featuring the charming collection of some smaller rulers, and they sent me some of the samples, so I'm gonna give you a sneak peek, and then you'll see these in an upcoming video in a couple months. So these are some smaller blocks. I'll just hold them up, and then you can take a look. So these quilts are done with like the whirly gig block or the crosshatch. This is the crosshatch and everything is used using five inch squares. This one we used the crosshatch and turned it into X's and O's. Isn't that great? That one is actually one uh, Edna made in our store, so that one will be staying. But some of these are on loan to us right now from some of the original designers. And I hope you're inspired by some of the colors that you see in these. And you can find these templates and other items. Oh, look at this one. Isn't this great? It's a gigantic cross. And then this one kind of reminds us of a little bit of fall time here. So love it. This one is using a little bit of the snowball block as well. All right, I just want to get through these so you can really see. Now this one you might need to put your sunglasses on because it is a little bright. But look how fun and cheery that is, maybe for an upcoming small little one that you might be expecting. All right, so when we talk about decorative stitches, we're talking about well, first off, you got to sew out those decorative stitches from the sewing machine. You're really going to notice that they are going to look so much prettier sewn out than they do just pictured on your screen. So I always recommend for our new sewing machine owners is a little stitching time. And if you have a machine that has electronic features such as the start stop button, all you need is a piece of fabric, some tear away stabilizer, and a little time to spend with you and your machine. What you want to do is just put one layer of stabilizer behind your fabric, pick the first stitch in the first row, and start stitching. Maybe stitch out three or four inches and then stop. And if you have that start stop button, that means you're not holding the presser foot down as you're sewing. And so that really kind of just lets you relax and enjoy the stitch as it's sewing. When you go through the different rows, menus that you have, you're going to be surprised and you're going to fall in love with stitches along the way. Maybe put in some variegated thread. That always jazzes things up. And don't forget, if you go back and sew some of those stitches again with a double needle or a triple needle or the new double-eyed needle. Now, a double-eyed needle is not a, triple, a double needle. It is one needle with two eyes. And we have done a video on it. What it allows you to do is pretty much put two threads through one needle Make your own variegated thread. There's combinations out there that are not available in the variegated selection and you could combine any colors you want. So what I'm going to do is kind of bring you in closer let, and I'm going to point out some things on all of these samples that will be great inspiration for some of your upcoming projects. Decorative stitches can come in so many different forms, whether you use them for quilting, for garments. This was a recent sample we had at a recent uh, Viking event and where the students came in and did some quilting. They did some decorative stitches in the chevron area. And then I decided to go in and make some fun 3D stitches using the new Husqvarna Viking Diamond Royale machine that allows me to Add these fun little sections here along with the decorative stitches and so I just and a little applique this was done with decorative stitches no embroidery so I just had fun and of course decorative stitches you can use to stitch down binding now I pick stitches that are going to stitch out a little bit quicker I don't want a really heavy decorative stitch now if you've taken the time to stitch out your decorative stitches you're going to know which stitches are going to take more time more thread and don't sew out as fast and you'll pick the one that are a little bit quicker when you're going all the way around all four edges. This one was from a recent ruler of the month and I went ahead and created the look of gray fabric but and red fabric 
fabric with some of the red stitching on the black and just had some fun. So I just stitched rows and rows and then cut my uh, triangles and blocks from the decorative stitches that I made. This is one that I always enjoy showing. And what we did was we manipulated the decorative stitches with high contrast thread. So here where you see the pink and the purple, but made them small enough to be around the delicate smaller edges. So that sometimes means adjusting your stitch width and stitch length to get the proportion that looks best around the size of these smaller pieces. If you got bigger pieces, you might change them a little bit. Another thing as you go around, you kind of work on how and when to stop at the corner. So as your stitch goes back and forth, back and forth, you might want to wait till the stitch is maybe in the center before you turn a corner and then let it continue on with the decorative stitch. For me, it was always a game of how close I can get to my corner, know when that decorative stitch is going to change direction. So when I do turn, it goes the right way. So th that's a small one. This is the larger version of that particular um, kind of techniques. And my goal here was to use every single decorative stitch that did not include the blanket stitch. So many of us get stuck in the blanket stitch rut. So I tried all different sorts of stitches on this particular quilt. Recently, we featured the circular embroidery attachments from both Bernina and Husqvarna Viking. And when you do it with decorative stitches, you can see you can <laughs> sew in a circle. And with all your decorative stitches, you, it is endless what you can do, whether you go around as a satin stitch here or with around an applique or just maybe going over the corded area. So we actually stitched with a um, like a couching type technique underneath here. Now, some of these are going to be quilts that uh, my mother-in-law made, Cleo. So she has done some things with decorative stitches on all sorts of different things. As we take a look here, her work is beautiful. Isn't that great? And so you're seeing the decorative stitches coming up with kind of matching thread here to really give it some extra dimension in a landscape form. I'm going to just jump over here to some smaller projects. We do a lot of what are called charity gift bags. Every October, we take all the bags that have been donated to Heirloom Creations and fill them full of the travel size soap, shampoos, conditioners, you know, all those toiletry items that you pick up at hotels. We collect those all year long. And then people make these great little zippered bags. And one of our customers and uh, one of our employees made them using decorative stitches and just really quilted the, the the two pieces together, put a little batting in there, using up fabric, using up zippers, and then we are collecting those. Usually we do between a thousand to two thousand, depending on how many bags we get done, but the product is important. So if you care to drop off any of that product at Heirloom Creations anytime throughout the year, that's great. If you want to help sew those, we have some videos on our website. Just type in charity gift bags. This is just a quick little applique. Actually, my mom made this one. She used this as one of her classes where she had them do decorative stitching around a heart, giving them options for using their machine as a brand new, kind of a new owner's class, and then a little free motion quilting around the outside. So I'm going to get into some of the things you can do. Home deck is another place. Now, when you work with decorative stitches and then you build up to heavier, bulkier items, usually you want your deco decorative stitches to go down first. So they are going to be kind of the base layer and then work up to heavier items, sequins, beads, pearls, um, heavier braids and cords after that. This was just a pillow I made that really just kind of created created its own piece of fabric and I cut it into a square, called it a pillow in no time at all. This bag has some decorative stitches along the fabric lines here. Just gave it a little bit of an extra additive as I put the strips together. These are, once again, Cleo. She loves to get a little excited. She does not use an embroidery machine. She is a sewer, she is a quilter first, and these just really express her dimension with decorative stitches on smaller quilts. And she loves vintage lace, so adding decorative stitches, kind of that tone on tone, really shows off some of those neat things. Here's a few more. Variegated thread, always at her fingertips. She always has tons of spools uh, uh, next to her sewing machine. And here using decorative stitches to just stitch down the binding. Here's one more. This is a vintage uh, kind of notebook cover. So using some of her antique linens and then a variegated kind of taupey colored thread for the decorative stitches. Now, a while back ago, we did 
what are called trading cards. Do you remember these? So they're just fun little cards that we would make and then we would trade with our friends and then we would have a whole notebook full of fun things. So these are just neat. I sometimes look, when I look through these, I see mine, I see my friends and I'm inspired by some of the smaller techniques that were done with the decorative stitches through those. There are still trading card groups that are uh, online where you can go. Uh, here's some from Australia that we've traded with. So we sent them cards and they sent us cards. So it's always neat to see what kind of fabrics and techniques they do in different countries. Just fun. So I have a book, Cleo has a book, and they're just amazing. So it helps you kind of get out of your comfort zone and try something new. Okay, trading cards. Set those aside. When you play with decorative stitches, a lot of times you can use them along the edge here. See how we use the scallops and then just trim that away. Decorative stitches on ribbon too. This actually is a buttonhole and it has a little bit of a tuft piece of fabric here. And that's actually what closes this cute little bag. Also stitching on fabrics that are pre-striped or denim fabrics is another one that really highlights. If you do your decorative stitches on denim, you'll really um, have a nice showing. The background really shows off the stitches. But this one had pre um, the uh, striped fabric. It's almost like a little bit of a, a velvet. And then we just stitched down to really kind of accent the stripes. Remember fabric bowls? Well, here's another one that we really, we just again played with some of the variegated threads. Sometimes you just have to play with it to see what kind of look you're going to get. Now this one was embroidered, so, but it was in my bowl collection, so I just brought it out. But these are always fun. That's got that Timtex type in there, and they're actually reversible, so you can actually push them through and voila, different colored bowl. Here is one more. If you actually do a little decoupage, this is actually has decorative stitches on a monogram and just really gives it a whole new look with that. And one more from Cleo here, just a beautiful little stitched um, sachet or pin cushion and then added with the decorative stitches. Now these are some of the samples from Cleo's applique class and she always encourages the use of decorative stitches in those classes. Now this is one that you're probably not gonna be able to see a lot of and honestly because of the muted colors of the print, there is decorative stitches on every one of these seams and they blend in. So they're subtle that they're there when you get close to it, but it really doesn't show up a lot in the work that was done. So I always kind of go, oh, when I see this, because I, well, I think the colors just were, they're unique, but yet we lose all the decorative stitching that goes in there. So I always say, if you're going to do it, make sure it's big and bold and you really can see all the work that you're putting into it. Now this one is from Sarah Velder, uh, an embroidery collection, but she uses the embroidery machine software and uses the decorative stitches as outlines. And so all of her work always shows up in these beautiful embroidery designs, but the decorative stitches are really what may take this all to the next level in the designs themselves. Here's another one. Can you tell that one's Cleo's? Yes. She's got decorative stitches on her art quilts. Once again, decorative stitches to go around any and all of the raw edges as these are fun quilts that are wall hangings. This one using decorative stitches and combining them with some raw edge applique. But you can see really some neat stitches that are used on the flowers. And once again, really highlighting the circles once again with decorative stitches. So next time you sit down to use your blanket stitch, maybe let's try something else. And what you see behind me is one of my favorite quilts. It is something I did quite a few years ago from the latte quilt originally done in browns and tans. I did mine in red and it is gorgeous. This is the same block. One of those blocks is in this pillow. But here's the thing. Back then we did not have embroidery hoops that were this big. And so we taught classes on how to re-hoop to get these gigantic blocks. But when you take a closer look, you see 
decorative stitches going around and kind of connecting everything together in their own little vine. And so I do say this has almost as much decorative stitches as it does embroidery. So I hope you've been inspired. Get out your sewing machine, put on a single needle, double needle, triple needle, and try out some variegated thread and stitch out those decorative stitches. I will see you next time.